Jala my body, 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 yo. Jala my body, jala my body, hey. Jala my body, jala my body. Randall Skippers from Cape Town on piano. <laughs> that is a very, very old Shangan song from the northern part of South Africa, from the Limpopo region. And I first learned it, a little part, I mean, I've like uh, um, uh, enlarged it a little bit, but I learned it from a young girl who had just come from Limpopo in the northern province, which is uh, traditionally um, the most heritage-oriented uh, province in South Africa today. 
And um, she came in like a Shangan outfits, like a Mijaka and what. And she used to come and she lived in a in a yard in one of the family yards in a township called Alexandra Township, which was a very, very um, um, cosmopolitan South African township. And um, it had mostly people from the rural areas. And it was a place that was um, a heritage carnival over the weekends. And um, this song was a song about Johannesburg. And it was warning rural people not to go to Johannesburg because you'll get mugged, uh, you'll get robbed, you'll get run over, and it's a dangerous place to go to. And she had just come from uh, the Limpopo, and I, said to, I used to say to her, what you doing here? And she said, I had to come and see what the song was really about. And of course, later on, she went into like a, a Western dress, and she got married to a school teacher, etc., uh, etc. Et but... The reason I chose this song is because I came here today to talk a little about heritage and its importance, especially heritage restoration. A great sample uh, of um, great heritage um, restoration is England itself because every time there's a royal wedding, wedding here, there's major pomp and ceremony, but it's all medieval and it's all about heritage. And of course, people also buy the flags and they buy the biscuits and they buy. So it's something that uh, heritage is something that is beneficial to, so, to a society. Um, in, in, in Africa, of uh, all the societies that have lost their heritage, I think Africa uh, stands uh, in the front line because of education, or, uh, the misconception of education because of religion, because of advertisement, uh, because of politics, and uh, because of television over the years. And of course, like the laws of reshuffling, like apartheid was a law of reshuffling people, and also like creating conflict between ethnic groups. And uh, if you impoverish people also, and you take away their lands, then they are less capable of exhibiting um, they are heritage crafts and their heritage performances. And it's a thing that has very much uh, disappeared in most of Africa, especially urban Africa, because all these people have been convinced through uh, the list I just um, uh, ran down to you. They've been convinced that their heritage is barbaric, that is heathen, that is uh, backward, that is primitive, that is pagan. And they've really bought it to um, an extent where we don't even try to look like who we really are at any time in our lives. And it's a great worry for me because when I look at my grandchildren, I figure that when they ask them 20 years from now who they are, they're probably going to say, they say we used to be Africans long ago. And when people come to Africa these days, they always come to look at the animals or to find Mandela or to uh, uh, look at the geographical sites because the heritage uh, performances and, 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 and the arts and crafts have more or less uh, disappeared or have been colonized by uh, uh, expatriate businesses. And uh, the people really have gotten to believe over the years in most of uh, urban Africa that their um, heritage is primitive and backwards and barbaric. So I'm very uh, involved in a heritage restoration program where heritage visibility in the form of performance arts and arts and crafts and design and architecture and the pomp and ceremony and the pageantry of long ago. And there's no place that has more di a more diversified cross-section of heritage excellence like Africa has, but it's invisible. Nobody has uh, had the chance to see it when they come to Africa and they're um, escorted to the elephants and the lions and the rhinos and um, uh, the Victoria Falls kinds of places. And to a certain extent, um, I'm a little jealous of those places because I think somewhere in there, the people should be found and the people should be able to like 
show um, their, the excellence of uh, their heritage. And um, it's a, a thing that is really worrying because it is happening to so many other societies all over the world. But it's at its worst, I think, in Africa. It's a major concern. And um, I am on a crusade, and, and I have a group of people. We have a heritage restoration society to at least make it visible and uh, to be involved in like uh, building places where um, heritage performances can take place and uh, to restore uh, the arts and crafts and the, and the curio ownership of uh, uh, what the people do instead of working for expatriate businesses. And uh, I also want to point out that the only artists that have really made it uh, overseas as far as um, their careers have gone and have lasted are those who are heritage arts uh, oriented. I think the greatest and the first example was Miriam Makeba, um, um, but Salif Keita, Yusundur, Lady Smith Black Mambazo, and even myself, I don't think I would have been known if I'd come overseas and tried to imitate overseas artists. So heritage lives forever and it stays. And I think there's no place that needs to see it come back more than the African uh, um, uh, diaspora and especially the African continent. And um, I want to appeal to you to think about this. And uh, if you are interested, maybe we can work together on heritage restoration. Um, um, a lot of Africans, when I speak to them about this, they say, man, why are you trying to take us back into the dark ages? You know, and I say, well, my usual answer is that if you don't know where you're coming from, you're not going anywhere, except uh, you're making yourself vulnerable to be swallowed in by other um, cultures. And of course, this is a total happening uh, in, in most of Africa. People don't even want to stay in uh, their rural uh, 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 um, homelands anymore. Everybody comes, wants to come to the city to find this miracle of the West that doesn't exist and they end up in squalor and things like that. But most of all, I think for the future generations and for people who want to really f uh, find uh, uh, most of the Africa that has disappeared, there is nothing better than like heritage restoration to preserve um, the history of Africa and also um, um, to make the children, the future children of Africa really know who they are. Because in the end, when you go to India or you go to China or even England, people really know England because not only because of the queen or the beef eaters or uh, the yeomen, but because of his heritage. And uh, it's a thing that would be a real pity to miss and to lose in Africa. Um, we'd like to finish this by like um, playing you another traditional song. And uh, as you know, in Africa, um, in the old days, and, and even now in the rural areas, when you're going to get married, you have to have a bride price and it was usually paid with cattle and other things but cattle were the most important and if the woman you wanted to marry was highly educated and very beautiful you'd probably lose all your cattle but the people who were most worried about the cattle were the eligible bachelors and they always warned the head boys the boys who headed the cattle to say boys, don't run those cattle too hard because the meat will get tough. So when you're driving them cattle, boys, be cool. Haleseli di kanna. Come and lie this time, we'll make a ceremony. 
Thank you very much. 